Hey YouTube, what's going on? Today I want to talk about my three months of usage with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Now, this is a flagship premium device in every way. Of course, it's missing just a couple of things, but overall, this is a great device. And it should be talked about a lot more because this device is awesome and it definitely could hold its own against any flagship currently in the market today now let me tell you about how my experience has been these three months first of all i just love the build quality of this device on um, the ceramic back gorilla glass victus on the front i have absolutely zero scratches on this device not even any micro scratches like nothing so this device is awesome <laughs> i'm telling you you got your nice in display fingerprint sensor works very well the face unlock is absolutely ridiculous as you can see how fast this thing works and i'm behind the camera <laughs> so i'm telling you i just i just love it and i love the haptic feedback and i love the animation that you get with the fingerprint sensor as you can see that little swirl so i love that so face unlock and you get an always on display as well comes with an always on display as you can see here Nice always on display. So the way this phone is built, that ceramic back, the only thing I wished it had was a frosted back because I can't use this phone without a case because it's too slippery and it's also a fingerprint magnet. As you can see, the secondary display here on the back, which I absolutely love. And with this here, it does you just can't, you just doesn't get the time to date in your battery percentage. You can make and receive calls, you can control your media. So you swipe up, you control your media, play, forward, back. You can get all your notifications, text messages, use it as a viewfinder, also take pictures with it. So you could do a whole lot with this. It's not just some thing where you can see the time. Now, the only thing that's negative about it is that it only stays on for 30 seconds. That's the only thing bad about it. Now, when it comes to design, everybody's not going to be a fan of this design. But I love it because this has the biggest camera module on the market last year and this year with these three great cameras. You got 120 times zoom printed on the back here. These cameras are amazing. I'm telling you, <laughs> these cameras are top notch. But I like the design of this because it's just different. There's nothing else on the market that looks like this. Now, for most people, this is not a sexy looking phone, but it ain't, every phone don't have to look sexy to me like. I like stuff that's unique and different. So maybe that's why I like stuff like the wing, the fold and something like this, because it's just different. So I love the design of this phone. Big 6.8 inch display, quiet HD. Love it. Just absolutely love this display. I mean, sometimes this finger position can be a little funny, but most of the time it works fine. So you got this big, super bright, quiet HD plus display with hdr 10 plus 1700 nits brightness now i know with samsung's s20 22 ultra 1750 so it's a little bit brighter than this but i'm telling you this is the brightest display that i have on any of my uh smartphones and i love how bright this display gets it's absolutely beautiful one of the most beautiful displays that i have in my arsenal of course I just did a comparison with this with the eight, uh, OnePlus 8 Pro not too long ago. And the OnePlus 8 Pro is just a little bit better, not for its brightness, but just because of that motion graphic smoothing. And it's just a little more punchy and a little more sharp and crisp. So, but this is the second best display that I have on any of my phones. So I love the build quality, the design. The phone can still be a little pricey, unfortunately. Um, but it's still a good catch if you're the type of person that money's not an issue for you. Definitely worth picking up. I think you can get it now probably around between, I say, $899 and a little bit more, depending on where you get it from. All right. Now, I already talked about the secondary display. I love that IP68 water and dust resistance so you don't have to worry about any water damage, which I love that. Um, the always-on display is great. The button placement is also great on this because... You can see where my thumb is and see how low it is. So it's very easy to, I mean, it's not up here. So you got the volume rockers 
right above the power button. So the button placement on this device is excellent. Excellent. So I love the button placement on this device. Audio, 24-bit uh, hi-fi audio tuned by Harman Kardon is great now. I wish it had a headphone jack, but it doesn't. But when you do plug in to the USB Type-C port, you're going to get great stereo sound from the port, from the 24-bit hi-fi audio. It sounds excellent. You're not going to be disappointed with the audio sound with this device. And you can tweak the settings. You got an equalizer in there. You got so many different settings in there once you put your headphones on. Now, I'm not talking about Bluetooth. I'm talking about actual headphones. You'll go in there, and they'll have tons and tons of different settings that you could use once you plug in a set of headphones. So that's something you may want to check out now. It, I mean, it sounds good with the Bluetooth, but it's going to sound better if you put a pair of headphones in that jack there. I mean, in that um port. Now, this phone also has a IR blaster, something that Flossie Carter talks about a lot. And I'm with him on that because I talk about it a lot, too. You have that universal remote control that's not only for TVs, but it could be used for a lot of different things, as you can see here. OK, and I already talked about this before. Air purifier, water heater, camera, <coughs> excuse me, light bulb, projector, <coughs> DVD play, AVC, AV receiver, fan, AC, smart box, setup box, TV. So it's not just for TV. OK, it could be used for multiple things. So I love that this device has an IR blaster, something that LG used to do and Samsung used to do, and they both just dropped them, but I'm glad there's still a company out here that has them because they come in handy for sure. Now, other thing is the battery life. Now, my battery life with this phone has been great. I can get on average a day and a half, but a lot of times I can get two days as well. As long as I'm not going super, super heavy and crazy, usually a day and a half is usually the norm, but I definitely can get two days. And I'm not talking about two days with light usage. I'm talking about me moderate to heavy usage, two days, heavy, heavy usage, a day and a half. Keep in mind, this has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it has a beastly battery and the standby time on this device is great as well. Now, the thing that one of the one, now one of the things I love the most, now, not the most thing I love the most. Now, the thing I love the most is this display. That's my favorite thing about this device. But the next thing I love about this device, too, is the battery charging speeds. 67 watt wire charging, 67 watt wireless charging, and 10 watt reverse wireless charging, otherwise known as power share. So 0 to 60 in 36 minutes wired, 0 to 100%. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me say that again from the beginning. I know I said that wrong. 0 to 100% wired. 36 minutes, zero to hundred percent wireless, 39 minutes. Okay. And 10 watt power share reverse wireless charging. That's the highest on any smartphone. Samsung went from nine Watts on the note 10 plus down to 4.5 Watts. And it's the same for the S 22 ultra, which I don't understand that. I don't know why you would give us less, um, power share wattage. And also, Samsung, keep in mind, they never improved the wireless charging from the Note 10 Plus up until the Note 20, still 15, 15 watt wireless charging. Okay, the Note 10 Plus, the Note 20, 15 watt wireless charging. Okay, keep listening to me. The S21 Ultra, 15 watt wireless charging, and the S22 Ultra, 15 watt wireless charging. No improvements. And then with the reverse wireless charging, they went the other way. They went down. But with this, you're getting super fast charging, wired, wirelessly, and reverse. So you're getting it all. This is an ultra device. This, this is a true ultra device in every facet. When it comes to performance, <laughs> the phone is crazy, blazing fast. Everything just pops open with the quickness. You got this um, Snapdragon Triple Eight. It's a beast. Everybody knows that. It's you know this is a flagship device. Everything is super fast. Everything is super smooth. Android 12 on board. No issues with that. 
This phone, I love how fast and how smooth this device is. It's a beast. Trust me. Trust me when I tell you. No issues with performance. Performance is an A+. Plus. So if you're considering this device, you're going to love the performance of this device. The animations is nice. When you're charging it, you get a different animation when you charge it, and you get a different animation when you're wirelessly charging it. Good. I love the animations on this device. Also, it's using um, MIUI. Now, the this thing is packed with features and it's highly customizable. So if you're the type of person that like to change everything about your phone, you're gonna be able to do it with this phone. It reminds me of what Samsung does with their One UI, packed with customization, packed with features. You're gonna get that with this device. Also, the thing I love about this particular variant of this um, phone is that it came with 512 gigs of internal storage. Now the base model is 256, which I still think is good. But to be honest with you, when this phone was first released, it was over $1,300. Honestly, for $1,300 and change plus tax, you really should be starting at 512, in my opinion. <clears throat> Especially because this phone does not have expandable storage. So to me, with these smartphones that are coming out today that are all costing over $1,000 and you're going to take away expandable memory, they should be starting at 512 honestly, or 256 minimum. But to me, once you get to $1,200 and more like the S22, there is no way in the world that device should have 128 gigs for, for the base model with eight gigs of RAM and no expandable memory. That's ridiculous. It should at least minimum be 256. But to me, Anything $1,200 and above should start out at 512, especially if you're not going to give us the ability to expand the storage. I just don't like that at all. Now, keep in mind, I meant to say this comes with 12 gigs of RAM as well. Now, the RAM management on here has not been that great for me. I don't know what it is, but somebody else let me know that has this. Let me know if the RAM management has been a problem for you or, or has it been good. Let me know. But the RAM management hasn't been that great for me. But that's not the biggest deal. But it is a little bit of a concern. So, um, but it does come with 12 gigs of RAM. <clears throat> now, with the cameras, 50 megapixel wide laser autofocus, 48 megapixel periscope telephoto, 48 megapixel ultra wide, five times optical zoom, 20, 120 times hybrid zoom, and a 20 megapixel wide selfie. The cameras on this device are great. Check out my full review on this. You can see the pictures for yourself. They are excellent. I mean, telling you right now, these phones, I mean, these, sorry, these cameras are beast mode status, premium status, flagship status, whatever you want to say, they top notch. They can hang with any of the devices out there today, even the S22 Ultra, even the Pixel 6 Pro, even the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It can hang with all of those devices. That's how good these cameras are. And the video, the video on here is is excellent. Super steady, smooth video quality. 4K at 60 and um, 30 and 60 frames. Love it. Now, the only thing that's, that's disappointing with me with the camera, even the front-facing camera to me is great, but there's no 4K recording on the front-facing camera. I don't like that. Only 1080p at 30 and 60. Also, you do have the capability of 8K at 24 frames per second, which I'm never going to use because I don't have an 8K TV to watch it on. So why do I need that? Also, 24 frames per second is not enough. If you're going to put 8K capability on these phones, they need to do it at least 30 frames. Now, my Mi 10 Pro 5G from Xiaomi, 30 um 8k recording at 30 frames per second now i don't know why with this one they went down to 24 frames that 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 kind of confused me but that's what they did so i don't know <clears throat> and the one and last thing i'm gonna mention which i think i forgot the dual stereo speakers on this phone are great i mean really they're really good they're very loud they got excellent full stereo sound because they're tuned by Harman Kardon. So with this phone, you're going to get great build quality, okay? You're going to get a great display. You're going to get great charging speeds, 
great audio, dual stereo speakers, great camera, great performance. So I don't know if I left something out. So <laughs> that's a lot. Okay, highly customizable, packed with features, and you're getting that secondary display on the back. So that's 10. So this phone is definitely worth picking up. If you could afford it, it it's a little pricey. I'm not going to lie. And the only thing that's bad about this, I can't suggest people in the States get it only because it's going to be very limited as far as what carriers, because it's not unlocked. Now, it's a GSM only phone, but it's not unlocked for all carriers. So you may only be able to find one, maybe two carriers that that you can use this phone on. But I know with at and I can't use it. So, but I'm keeping it anyway because I use it for other things and I love this device. So anybody outside the U.S., you're going to be good to go with this device. You're absolutely going to love it if you decide to pick it up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's completely bezel-less. You got the one little punch hole camera cut out in the corner. This phone is just great. I love it. It's just, it's one of my favorite devices. My second favorite device. No, actually, it's still my f number one uh, favorite device. And then I would say the Note 20 Ultra and then my um, my Fold. So this is number two. I mean, this is number one. I'm sorry. Number one. Number one. So I love this device. I definitely highly recommend this for whoever can use it and you can use it on a carrier. You actually love it. It got nice, good weight to it. It's not, it's not um, like, I don't like thin phones. I know some people out there like thin phones. I like phones with a little bit of thickness and heft to it. And this is one of those phones. You will love the, the, just the thickness and the solid feeling of this device. You're going to love it. So that's that, you know, those are my three months of usage with this device. I absolutely love it. Definitely can highly recommend it. It pretty much checks all the boxes only thing for me is missing is a headphone jack <clears throat> you know expandable memory and 4k recording on the front facing camera that's it other than that it has everything else <laughs> so i absolutely love this device thank you for taking time to view this content i do appreciate it hope you all are staying safe and staying well and i'll check you guys out in the next one peace